All right, hello everyone. Um, my name is uh, Oliver Seldman. This is the Views 3 walkthrough session. Um, you can see I just created a little text note here. I'm not going to have any slides. I, I'm just going to be stepping through the, the user interface, creating a couple of simple views. Uh, in general, I'm not a slides kind of guy anyway, but uh, for this type of thing, um, I really figured that just doing it and walking through some of the stuff that, that, you, that you need to think about and um, just kind of pointing out where things are is the best way to get acquainted. My name is uh, Oliver Seldman. My, uh, Twitter is uh, O-T-S-E-L-D, and my, uh, my Drupal username is, uh, is O. Seldman. And uh, that's all my slides. <laughs> uh, well, I actually wanted to show you guys this. So if I, if I, if I go to my browser and start typing drupal.org slash projects, what shows up? Views. It's probably every time I go to Drupal.org and search for a project, it kind of keeps track. So you can see that Views is probably the the one I go to the most. Um, views is um, is is as far as I'm concerned, an absolutely essential module. Um, it it uh, I have never built a site without it, and um, I've actually never worked on a site that didn't use it. So um, as far as I'm concerned, it is, it's, uh, it is the most essential module, uh, contributed module. And, um, and if you go to download and extend and uh, have a look at modules, you will see that uh, it's the top of the list. Just about everyone else in the world thinks the same thing. So, um, so right. We, we know it's essential. <laughs> so, so what is it? Um, how many people here um, know what a what a um, a database table and querying a database table means? Okay, that's just about everyone. Um, uh, just a quick background with it. Then, so information is stored, particularly with Drupal, in something called a relational database, where information is stored in multiple places. And um, when we need to gather that information, we need to ask the database for it. And um, often we need to join multiple tables of information to gather the info that we want. And Views is a user interface for doing all of this, not only for asking the database for the information, but also for deciding what to do with it once we get it, how we show it, and what, we do, what, what types of things we do with it when we show it. Is it a list? Is it a slideshow? Is it a table? Um, how, what are we going to do with it once we get it? So, um, in terms of, uh, we, I mean, this is Views 3 walkthrough. I also just wanted to give you a little bit of a background for me. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a Drupal developer. I have, I've been a freelance developer for about 10 years and a Drupal developer since around 2007. So that's five, almost five years, four or five years. Um, and... Uh, Sorry about that. And um, here we go. And uh, so, so, so I actually don't um, haven't really used Views three that much. So this walkthrough, in a sense, is me me kind of going through some of the stuff I went through when I just started to try and figure it out as well. I've only really used it for some side projects. I actually haven't used it on a, a professional project for a client yet. So this is somewhat new. It's actually not um, in full release yet. And so, um, so some stuff might change a little bit. Mostly this is, this is, uh, this is pretty much locked in. Uh, but, uh, but some stuff does change. Actually, in the training we had on, uh, on, on Friday, we, we noticed that something had moved a little bit and had been changed, some, called something slightly different. So some of this is me just discovering it, me just discovering it too and trying to notice the differences between two, Views 2 and Views 3. Now, the, the biggest difference between Views 2 and Views 3 is, the, is the, the, user, the user interface is completely different. And, um, and one second here. Let's just get back to that Views project page for a second. Um, so one, the biggest thing is, is the, the user interface. They, they tried to make it a little bit more, more user-friendly, easier to, easier to get into, 
um, and easier to get to where you needed to do and do the most important stuff first and then get in to tweaking some of the complicated stuff. One of, one of the difficulties with views too, you open it up and you're like, oh my God, this is just overwhelming. There are a hundred different things I can click on. Where do I begin? So one of the big additions is, uh, is kind of a setup wizard where you just get some of the most basic things that you need to do right there available to you. That's the first thing you do, make a couple settings, get your view working, and then see where we go with that. We can always go back in and tweak it, make it more, um, make it more customized, add filters, add fields, figure out how we're going to do um, more complicated stuff. But, but so this, actually, the Views 3 is kind of a combination of the Views 2 module and um, Simple Views, which was basically the little Views wizard. Now they're combined, you go step through the wizard, and then we get into the complicated interface. There are um, a couple of other changes. Uh, some of the displays are moved around. Um, their kind of drop-down menus have been added to manage stuff. And a couple things have been renamed, which is really confusing. And in fact, you may hear me accidentally refer to it as the old way, because I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm still getting used to it myself. Um, so I want to dive right in here. Uh, we don't have much time, and uh, there, this is, as you can imagine, quite a bit to learn. Um, just this, so this is my uh, very basic Drupal 7 installation here. Um, all I've done is installed Drupal and then put a couple modules in. Um, for, for those of you who, who don't maybe know the file system here, um, oh, okay. For those of you who don't maybe know the file system here, um, that we have, uh, we have sites, all, oh, modules, and here, here are the modules that I've added. Um, we got admin menu, which is a, a little simple uh, navigation uh, toolbar replacement, which is something that I'm used to using in, in, in uh, Drupal 6. Uh, and so I just, I wasn't so keen on the, the Drupal 7 toolbar. So I just, I'm using this one, which, which I like much more. It gives you much more control. Um, you'll see as I use it, but I just didn't want anybody to be surprised, like, where did the normal toolbar go? Um, uh, and then we have, we have uh, C tools, which is a dependency of views. It, this is a new thing for 7. Views is, is now uh, requires C tools. It didn't before, but now it does. Um, Earl Miles wrote both of them. Um, and he's here today, so you should definitely go check out his session, except that it's at the same time as my other session. So, <laughs> but, uh, um, but uh, so, so these are two awesome modules, and you, you'll find a lot of things, uh, find a, a lot of things to do with them. Um, then there, there are two other modules that I have in here. One is Devel, which I'm going to use. Uh, it's a, develop, a developer module, which helps you do a lot of things in terms of testing when you're coding. But one of the other things it does is allow us to generate a whole lot of content, just you know, dummy content, without me going in and entering 50 nodes. I just hit generate 50 nodes, whatever, and we're good to go. Um, so this is going to help us do some testing with views and not spend too much, waste too much time, you know, having to click around on stuff. And um, there's one other module called EVA, which is Entity View Attach, which used to be called Views Attach in in six but has been updated for the concept of entities in 7. Um, and, and, and so, and this is it. If we get to the views attached stuff, uh, it's, it's really cool to see how you can grab a view and throw it onto something else. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get there. Um, I will, uh, I'll try and speed through the stuff that's possible to speed through. So let's just check out this, uh, this installation here that I've got. It's called... Uh, Views walkthrough. Ever, anyone who's installed um, views, prob I mean, has installed uh, Drupal, well, this is what you get once you're in. The only difference is that I have this uh, toolbar at the top, and you'll notice that it has the same, uh, maybe I should go a little bit bigger. Is that better for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you notice that it has the same, same functions, same buttons. But instead of just being a single click, you actually get all of the sub-menu items for all of these features, all of these sections of the site, and and it just makes me being able. If I want to configure uh, some module, I can drill right down into the exact spot I want to go instead of a bunch of clicks. So it makes a big difference. Um, 
All right, so um, let us uh, let us go and uh, use this uh, development. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go and, and just give. Let's just quickly look at this. Uh, let, let's just look at this views page real quick. So I just went to views. Uh, haven't done anything yet. And right away, you see at the top here. If you install the advanced help module, you get a lot. Of, you get extra help much better help than is available, and it provides you some contextual help. Um, the, I actually tried to install this, and there was a little, uh, it's not quite, maybe not quite ready. I got, a, I got an error when I tried to install it. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because I'm here to teach you this stuff. I'm, the, I'm your advanced help for today, so, uh, so we, we don't need it for, for this. But, but just, uh, just to know that as you're stepping through this stuff and trying it out for yourself later, um, using this advanced help module will really help you with explanations for what's doing what. Um, it does point out a very interesting uh, message here, hide this message. And if you look at the, at, the, uh, at the URL at the bottom, you probably can't see it. It's just going to the settings page, which, which I'm, I'm going to uh, point out up here at the top, these two tabs up here, the list and the settings. So you could click here, hide this message, but it's just going to take you to the settings tab. And you can see show advanced help warning. And I'm just going to turn that off and we'll go, you know, uh, there are a couple of other things that you can do um, with these settings. Most, I, I don't change them. You know, if you had a reason to change them and knew you were in here, um, knew you needed to, you could, um, you could go in here and, and edit some of this stuff. There's also a, um, an advanced tab, which has to do with, um, with dealing with caching. You, it, it, it would, Views is going to cache this stuff by default, is saying, but if you don't want it to, you could turn it off. And, um, and some debugging and localization if you wanted to use that. Um, you can set that here. Basically, all I wanted to do was just turn off this advanced help warning and save. And you had a question? Anybody? Did you have a question? OK, awesome. All right, so let's get back to listing these. And I'm going to grab a drink as well. All right, so wh what do we have here? We have um, add a new view, which is basically what we're going to be doing and a list of some other views that are provided by Drupal Core by default that, are, that come uh, disabled, and we can enable them to, to, to work with them if we want. Um, this is a great way to just see how views are built. Click on one of these. In fact, we're going to maybe do this later. Click on one, turn it on, and see how it's set up. And you can clone it and tweak it to your heart's content and play with it that way as well if you're afraid of maybe you might want to use one of these later and don't want to mess with it. You can just go here, and this is a new addition. You would go, instead of enable, or in addition to enable, you can pull down this drop down, and it gives you some other options, um, including clone, if you didn't want to just work on the original one. But we are here to build our own views, not look at someone else's. So um, there, there are a couple things. I actually haven't used this view, add view from template. It looks like it provides. Uh, uh, some some default uh, views that you can. I, I'm a, I'm guessing it's similar to clo to cloning, but I, I haven't used that feature yet, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, and then you, there's also this option import, which allows you to when you're done with your view, save it, um, and then maybe bring it in later, uh, back it up. You can this this also this functionality ties into features, so you can save your views into features for later. That's uh, pretty advanced stuff. You maybe have heard other people talk about it. But also it allows you to work on a view in one environment and then bring it into to a, a, a second environment if you want to. Um, so, but th that, this was just kind of me talking through the interface here. Um, let's get right to adding a new view. So um, bef bef actually, before we need to add this view, we've got to have a, some content to, to show to show, to have the view grab. So within this devel module, we're going to go to uh, generate content here. And you can see, I'm going to generate, these are just the default content types that Drupal core comes with, article and basic page. Um, I'm going to create 100 new nodes from anywhere from a year ago. Um, we're going to give them some comments because if we have some time, we're going to play with some, the comment view as well. And I don't care about aliasing. We're just the, using this for test stuff. 
So we're working, 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 generating all our reviews, hours and hours of typing, and close out our overlay and check out the site now. Okay, so now just quickly looking through this, we have two kinds of content. Um, articles can have photos and pages can't by default. So what we're looking at is a basically like a river, a river of content, um, the most recent first of articles, page, article, page, page, article, you know, back and forth. So this is all just one list of all the content on our site. So our little use case for this, for this, um, for this uh, demo is that we're going to create a view to show, we're going to, so up here in our little uh, main menu, we got home, we were going to add a couple tabs, one to just list articles and the other to list pages. Um, hopefully we'll have plenty of time to get through all this stuff. So let's, um, let's go to our structure views, add a new view, which is the same as what, what, what I just showed you from, you know, clicking through to get there. Um, this is going to be, a, I don't know, list or our content. Yeah. So you see how um, we're, we're creating a, a name for it, and Drupal's automatically guessing what, what the machine name should be. So when, when the, the database needs to refer to this view um, or uh, programmatically need to refer to this view, we would be using this machine name. Um, it's guessing based on what I typed. I can always go in here and edit it if I want to, but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. Uh, it's always great to, uh, to uh, add a description because if you've got like 100 views, 10 views, 20 views, and you're looking through the list, it may be difficult to figure out which is which. So this is going to be a, a list of, um, of our different content types, something like that. And this, so we're right here, we're in this wizard that I was telling you about. It's doing some really basic stuff for us, just saying, what's the view called? What are we supposed to do? We want to show content of article type, as we talked about. Theoretically, we could limit it to some taxonomy term if we needed. We want to show newest first, just like it was doing before. We do want it to create a page. In this case, we want our page to be called um, articles. And uh, we want the path that it creates for this page also to be called um, articles. And we want to show an unformatted list of teasers. You could show full post or just the titles. It gives you a little bit of control of um, the types of things. We could do a little table of this stuff. I, I want to just keep it simple, basically using all of these defaults. Uh, Ten items to display, which means it'll, it'll create a pager. We do want a menu link because I said I wanted it up in the main, main menu there. So we'll, put, we'll tell it which menu we want to put it in. And, and we also want the link to be called articles. And uh, maybe, yeah, why not? Let's give it an RSS feed. Nah, you know what? Let's not give it an RSS feed. So let's just save and exit. So all we did now was go through the wizard. We didn't do anything else. No customization. And already... We have, it takes us to our new page. You can see up here in the path, we went to our articles page. You can see that we, have, we, ha we now have the articles menu tab here, and it's selected. We've got our page that's titled articles based on, what, based on what we created. And you can see now that it's actually only showing the articles. Not, none of the pages are here. So, so we got a view. We, we did it. <laughs> We're done. Um, no, so, so, so all we've had to do now is just go through this, this, uh, this wizard. But now let us, uh, let's go check out what happened. Okay, whoa. Here, here's, all of the, here's all the stuff that's going on. And, um, and this, is, uh, this is the interface that, that uh, initially may have scared some people and, and now has been moved around a little bit to... Um, to help, uh, to help us get a sense of, um, of, of maybe kind of grouping the stuff together a little bit better. But let's just quickly um, walk through some of this stuff here. And we can see that uh, all of the stuff that we created 
is, is in here. Um, it created a, a new display type for us called a page. If we want it, we will go and add some other ones, but we can just go in here, add a new display type. This is different. It's, it's shown differently than it was in views two. As we create more display types, they just show up here across the top. In this case, it just calls it a page. We created a page. It calls it a page. This can be really confusing if you have 10 pages in your view, which, which page is which. So I actually like to call them what they are. So this is the art articles page. Um, so that when it shows up here in this, in this top bar, we know which, which page, which, which display type we're working on. And you can also see here, it gives us this big yellow message saying, basically, that our changes, our changes have not yet been saved. If we do want to save them, we need to hit the Save button. But I'm actually going to make, make a couple other little changes here, too. So, um, so yeah, let us, uh, let's just change this one to, um, let's see what we got here. So, okay. Actually, let's, let's just keep, a couple, keep this simple for a second here and save it. All we've done now is just label our display. So what, I, what I'm going to do is go back in. I actually didn't mention this when I did it before. But, so I could be going in here, structure, views, uh, you know, listing the views, or, and, and, and going that way. But when I'm on a view, you can, view, you can click on the, the, the header of it and see a little gear here for, for jumping right in contextually to edit what you're working on. We go in here and edit that view. And what I want to do is I want to create an, a new page. Now, theoretically, I could go back through the wizard, create a whole new view just for, um, just for the pages, not the articles. Basically, go through the exact same process, but in the pull-down menu, instead of choose articles, I choose page. That's too easy. We got to get complicated here. I'm actually going to take the same view because basically everything is the same and create a new page display of it in which I basically keep all the settings but just alter the couple of pieces that I want to, to get this other list. So it says here, there's a big message, a, a new uh, a, a page requires a path. If you got a page, it needs to be somewhere. So here we are on the, on, in the page settings. And I'll give it a path. This one is going to be our pages. So our page of pages. Let's go. <laughs> Articles, pages. And uh, we do want to change a few of these settings, as I mentioned. We'll call this one uh, pages. Pages page. <laughs> Just so everyone gets confused. Uh, the title, we don't want it to be articles. We want it to be... Um, here we go, list of our pages. And there's one other piece. Um, we, we, we are going to change some of this stuff, but the most important thing we need to change now is it's asking for this content type called article. Um, these are the criteria that it's, are being used to determine what shows up. And we're requiring that the, the node be published and we're choosing it to show only articles. But here what we want to do is actually switch it to uh, pages instead. Um, and there's one other thing to note here. Right now it's going to do this for all displays. We don't want to do this for all displays. We just want to do this for our new display. So we actually do for this page and it indicates that it's being overridden. So as we create multiple pages, multiple blocks from the same view, Basically, what we're doing is picking and choosing a couple of things and overriding them for each individual, fit, each individual new display we create. So there's kind of a base level of, of settings that we're using across all of them, and then each display has its own slightly different settings. And, that's how, and by overriding them, that's how we keep them uh, in, different. So... Um, and then, now, so now we've changed it to content type basic page. And because of that, the, the sort criteria here might be a little bit weird because these pages are not about when they were posted. Pages are supposed to be kind of more static, uh, not quite so re regularly changing content. 
So um, I'm going to, I'm actually, for this display, for this page, I'm actually just going to remove this, this sorting for now. And uh, let's just save. Let's just uh, see what this gets us. Okay, so, so we, okay, we noticed a couple things. First of all, our title changed for our articles page. That's not intentional. We, we didn't get a tab up here yet. That, that's not what we wanted. So let's just go back in and fix this. So first of all, back on the articles page here, the, this, this first uh, page display that we were working on, let's change our default title back to, well, list of our articles. And then on our pages page, we're going to click on it. And oh, we forgot to overwrite it before. So now we'll go list of our pages. So now, and we can just check real quick. On this one, it says list of our pages. And you actually see how it's um, italicized. That's indicating to us that, it's, that this, this field is an overridden one right here, list of our pages. If we go back to the articles page, we can see that it's still called list of articles. OK, so that helps. But the other element was that we were missing our menu. And in, so in this one, if we go into our page settings, we had it at articles. And you can see the next item right here is menu normal, normal menu, and we, we called it articles. OK, so let's go into our new page and see what's up. Ah, there's no menu. So let's give it one. Remember, it was a normal menu item. A normal menu item, and um, we actually want to. What's that overlay that keeps popping up? It's uh, it's it's called um, it's called little snitch, oh, and okay. it it tell it, it it tells me if my computer's trying to connect to something that I'm not aware of. Yeah. So so if I some that now. okay yeah if something in the background starts trying to connect and I don't know about it, it lets me know. Unfortunately, it's trying to connect to the it, for something I do want it to connect to, but. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so uh, next time it comes up, I can, I can tell it to so just keep going. But, so for this menu, we actually wanted to call it um, uh, pages. And in this description, if we, give it, um, if we give it a description, when we mouse over it in, in, the, in the menu, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell us, uh, it's going to like a hover with a little description text. So this is a list of our pages, okay. And again, we need to tell it which of the menus we want to put it in. This one is the main menu across the top. Um, and wait is, it allows us to decide where in the order it shows up. We can deal with this through drag and drop in another interface, but that may be outside of the scope of this. We just want to keep trucking through our, our views changes here so we can get as much in as possible. So let's save what we just did. and see that it's fixed a couple of these things. OK, our list of articles is back to being called a list of articles. We have our new tab up here. Um, when we click on it, ah, we're back to list of pages. And we can see here that now this is the pages one is showing pages. And the articles one is only showing articles. So now we just got two views. I mean, one view with two, two displays. And we're already well deep in here with our configurations and tweaks. Um, so there are now let's go in here and make these completely different in how they look a little bit. So this list of articles, it's just the same kind of river of news as, as it would be appearing on the home page. So we don't really need it that kind of way. The way I'm, I'm looking at it is let's, let's get, a, let's get a, a list of article titles and let's organize it by month so that we can just go and see uh, at a glance how many posts we had in all throughout the year and, and be able to jump right to February articles or whatever. Um, and so, so we'll, we'll, this is like a much more useful kind of uh, article archive, let's call it. So we need to do a couple things here. 
We, we need to change. So that now, and the reason I'm doing this is because, of course, it introduces a couple of these other things that we haven't had a chance to play with yet. So, so here within the format, an unformatted list isn't quite going to cut it. We, what we actually need is a, just a simple HTML list. We don't want this for all displays. Again, we need to be careful now. Now, as we're getting into multiple displays, we need to be very careful about what we're setting as default and what we're setting as overrides, because remember, there's this kind of base default of settings, and if we tweak it, then everything's going to be affected. So in this one, if it, we actually get some additional settings here. We can add custom classes if we wanted to. We can make it unordered or ordered. We can wrap each of the items that we're showing in a, in, in a class. We can, we can control some of the, the CSS that we, that's coming out of um, some of the CSS, the tags that are coming out of views, so that if we want to come back in and style it later, we're going to have a little bit more control of that. In this case, we don't, we don't need to bother. Um, so then another key thing that we're changing here, you, so you see, as soon as I change the format type, this whole little section got overridden and is now showing it's italicized. This whole little section is slightly different now. Um, so another element that we want to change here, we don't want it to just show full content teasers. We were saying we just wanted like the title of the article, let's say. So instead of showing content, we actually want it to show fields, and we're going to choose which field we're going to show. Uh, once again, making sure this is overridden. Because we overrode the format, this is going to be um, overridden by default as well. It's pretty smart that way. Um, we can um, include text and make it inline if we want, which if we showed a couple fields, they'd all be showing next to one another instead of stacked on top of one another. We don't want to bother with that. We can add separators between these fields if we're doing that. But again, we don't, we're, we're not. This is, way, this is a little more complicated than what we need. So as soon as I saved it, you see this area now has a field in it. Before it said no fields are selected because of the format type. But here, it's, it said, oh, you want a field? You probably want the title of the, of the node, huh? Um, so it's, it's smart enough to make some of these suggestions for us. This is also new to Views, to views 3. So now, let's, um, let's take a quick look at, um, at what we got here. Oh, actually, here, here we are with this pager. Let's, uh, let's just alter the pager. Now that we're going to be making these slight changes, we actually don't want a pager. We want to list them all, actually all of our articles by month. Um, so I'm just going to turn off the pager for this display. Hmm. Items per page. I clicked the wrong one. Uh, OK. Here we go. <laughs> display all items. And this you can give an offset, which if you're combining multiple views, you might want to do that. You might want to have a view to just show you know, your extra special teaser for the most recent node, and then for everything else, just a list of titles. It's, it's a way of combining multiple, um, multiple views in one view. Um, but in that case, you'd want to offset the results of the other one so that it doesn't show the same one at the top of the list. Uh, we're not going to get into that. Again, that's maybe a little more complicated. But I uh, just want to point it out since we're there. So let's just save this and see what this gets us so far. OK. So here we are, a list, of just a kind of random list of all of our pages. OK, so there are a couple things we need to do. First of all, we want to alphabetize this, because otherwise it's a little bit, uh, I mean, these articles, it's a little bit hard to understand what, what's what, especially with the dummy text. But, <laughs> um, but then also we wanted to add that, that, that ability to search through our results based on the month. So we need to do a couple things. First of all, we need to add this new sort criteria. And this allows us to look into one of these, um, one of these other um, screens that Views offers. When, once you start working with fields, um, you can, you, we're going to get into this as well. But you see that it has a list of all the things that you can sort by, um, which can be long sometimes, particularly if you have a lot of modules installed or if you're working on fields, a lot of fields. So it provides this quick search. 
And it also provides um, a filter. So I can say, I know what I, wanna, I wanted to do. I wanted to sort on the title alphabetically. That's in content. Let's limit our, um, what's showing just to the content stuff to keep us focused on what we need. And I wanted to sort by the title. And I wanted it to be um, ascending, uh, alphabetical, and just for this display. Okay, now the next thing we need to add, I could save this, but all it's just going to do is alphabetize the list already. The next thing we need to do is a, a pretty important um, uh, element of, of, uh, of views. And um, in, in views two, it was called arguments. And this, this is, they changed it to contextual filters because it actually kind of describes what you're doing a little bit more um, uh, in a human understandable way and less like a programmer would be thinking about it. Um, if you're familiar with programming, you, could, you, know, you can provide your code arguments and it, it allows it to um, kind of change what it does or get values that alter what results it shows. Um, here, like, like we just set up these filter criteria for only published nodes and only articles, we're going to add a contextual filter which will show different stuff depending on what we provide it. And so in this case, the filter, remember what we were saying? We wanted it to be by, by the month. So let's go in here, look at the content, and see, okay, we can have the date, the day, the month. Here we go. The, the content, the month that it was created. And um, so we're just, again, we're just going to work on this display. And we're actually not going to change any of these other settings for now. We just want to see if it works. And let's save it. Okay, so now here's our list, alphabetized as we wanted. And <clears throat> as, so the way that, that views will take its argument is the ways that views han handles its argument is, is, to, is to take it in, in the browse, in the, the, uh, in the URL after the name of the view. It, 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 you put a slash and then an argument. You can actually chain multiple arguments together. So you could have month slash day or whatever. We're just working with month for now. So let's throw in a, month, a number here. You see I was testing this last night for the 10th month of the year. And you can see that now it's limited our content. Um, if we had shown dates, you'd see that these are, of course, only the ones from, from uh, well, here, let's click on one. You'll see, yeah. This one was created 10-31-2010, according to our site. So we, we're close. We got it filtering it contextually based on the info we want. But then there's this one other step of actually showing a kind of a summary of, of the stuff by month, broken down by month. And so if we go in here and change one little setting here to show a summary instead of display all values or provide a default value. Theoretically, we could have it, by providing a default value, jump to the current month or always jump to September or always jump to December or whatever. This time, or if none of the results are found, we can have it, uh, we can have it just show a page not found. We can have it show everything. We can have it show nothing. But in this case, we want it to show a summary. We want it to be ascending. By date, we want to. Um, we actually want it to be listed. The base path is going to be the same. We do want to create a little record count, give us a little list, a number list of all of the the items that we have. Let's see if we want to change any of this other stuff. No, let's just go with this and see what we get. Remember, we got to save every time we make a change. Now, we're still here on the 10th the month, but let's see if we go back to the main articles page. Here we go. Our list of months sorted by month with a number of how many posts were in each month. Let's go back to our 10th month. You can see actually in the little 
window at the bottom, it's basically doing the same thing we did manually, automatically for us. And you can see as we go through the months that it's, you know, it's, it's automatically putting in this argument that we told it to expect. So yeah, if we go back here to January, we can go through and see, I mean, with this dummy text, it's a little bit hard to tell because it all looks the same a little bit, but you can see that they're slightly different. So that, that's, um, that's, pretty, this, that's pretty far, just with a couple of clicks. We, uh, we've got two completely different looking sections of our site now, listing out the information that's here. Um, and, uh, and okay, so there are a couple things that we could do now. Um, we got a couple, I probably have about 10 more minutes of things that we can do. Um, one of the other things that I could do would be to change this list of pages to a table that listed the title, the author name, and the, uh, and the date of the post, let's say. Or I could go and talk about how we could attach this view to uh, another, no you know what, I'm going to, I'm confident that we're going to be able to do both of these. So I'm not going to make you choose. We're just going to do it. Question? Sure, go for it. Is there a way to put the list of content in the website as a menu and then each article would be only one article? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure I understand. If we go back to the list of articles. List of articles? Here, in, like over here, for example. Yeah. Sure. And then when we click, uh, like on January, it's under and it takes telephone, that's one article. I see. So that you, it would like you'd click it and it would like kind of give you a pull down and give you a list and stuff. Okay, so, so I, I, I'm not, I was going to try and get to that. Okay, here, you know what? Here's a way. Yes, it is possible. Um, to get the little drop down stuff, you might need another, another module to to tweak it a little bit. Um, basically, in order to move it around on your site into places within various regions, you need to create a block of that content rather than a page of the content. Um, a quick thing that I can just show you, though, is we can, here's an existing, uh, an existing view of recent comments that's already created for us. And you can see here that it, it has, it's already created a block display and a page display for us. So if we just um, it, go in, I'm actually going to do, I wanted to show you another little tweak, so this is a perfect opportunity. Um, in, so all I'm going to do is use this view by default. We kind of, you can primarily notice some of these other things. It's just adding a, a series of different fields. We already know an HTML list, by, and we know that it, we're choosing a list of fields. This one has an, a filter and a sort criteria, just like we did. The only thing I'm going to tweak here is this pager. And I wanted to show you guys what a mini pager looked like. So um, in this case, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll do our items per page. We'll hit save. And we'll hit save for this, uh, for this view. And now. We're going to go into our blocks under structure blocks and find our view that we just did here. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. I had, last night when I was playing with it, I already put it here. This is what it's going to look like by default. It's going to be here under none in the disabled area. And so what we could do would be to choose which region we want it in the sidebar first. Um, another way that we could do it is actually to grab this drag and drop handle and actually drag it into whatever region we want to put it. In this case, let's put it uh, below, above my navigation and let's just, you know, just to have it done here. We do need to save every time we make these little changes. And now if we exit out, you'll see it's now in our sidebar here, um, a, a view of comments, and there's this little mini pager at the bottom. And you can see as I click, It'll page through two of 36, three of 36. This is just what a little mini pager looks like. OK, so um, for this, um, for this uh, page view here, we wanted to, um, we need to introduce, this is a new thing for, <clears throat> a new thing for, for views three. It used to be that the article information, the author information, was part of, of the node information. 
Now uh, users are in a completely separate field. They're their own entity type now um, in Drupal 7. And because of that, or not, maybe not because of that, but, but um, related to that, um, we actually can't just grab it from the, no from the node anymore. We actually have to add what's called a relationship. And what, what a relationship is, is basically a, 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 a join, if you're familiar with SQL or, or, or requesting information from a database table. We're basically saying, here we're grabbing all this information, but we also want to join this information to this other table of, of user information so we can relate the information. Rather than just showing the user ID of who created this, we actually want to show the user's name. So we need to add a relationship to the information we want. And what we want to we want to do here under content, we want the content author. And um, just in the for the for the sake of time, I'm just going to do this. If we tried to go and add this information in, from our fields, it wouldn't it wouldn't be there. It, the author wouldn't be available to us by adding this the relationship. It's now available to us to list. So I'm going to just quickly power through this here. And uh, for this display, I'm going to create a, a, a table and save that. And I'm going to add a couple of other fields. Um, here's a little trick. Um, for, so we, what would we want with the title? We wanted the, uh, the content author. Oh, here, let's use this. This little search, start typing author. Oh, hang on a second, where did it go? Sorry about that. Add a field, author. User authentication module. Huh, didn't grab it yet. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, I probably have to save it. Ah, saving. <laughs> so, first of all, you see we got our table. Now we just need to add our other field here. It's not here. Okay. Um, I actually... It, we were getting a little ambitious here. I don't think I was going to be able to get to these last couple of things anyway. So maybe actually now with 10 minutes to go, this is a good stopping point um, to take some questions and stuff. Sorry about that last little piece there. So yes? My Okay, um, th this is going to require a, <clears throat> a, couple of, uh, a couple of things. Um, first of all, you need to be able to store the location information. There's a module called the location module, which can, can store physical locations um, using longitudes and latitudes. Um, and it's possible with that to show a, um, a, a proximity list is what it's called. Um, so you could, for example, allow people to search by zip code uh, within 50 miles. It would show all of the locations. You could associate um, users, like the owner of the node for that location, for example. What we were talking about by adding this relationship, um, you, would, you would relate the, the location, the node with the location on it to the author, and, <clears throat> and then grab the author's name and create your view to just show author names based on the proximity or show the node like a little table with the node name and the author name or something like that. Or, you know, actually throw in one of the address fields too, however, however you wanted to do that. Um, there are a couple of ways of doing location stuff. The location module, I think, is, a, is at a pretty good point right now. It wasn't exactly working great um, up until pretty recently, but now I've heard some people who I know who have been using it saying that, it, that it's been working pretty good for seven. I personally haven't tried it, but, um, but they said they got it working, so that, uh, it might be good to, to try that one out. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, you want me to show you about the author name? Okay. So um, you don't have to... 
Oh, yeah, so, so um, at there, there was no next step, really. I mean, I, I, with that, I, mean, I can sit here in, in a minute and just tweak it for a second or even show you uh, off to the side, spend another minute uh, clicking around to make sure I get it right. But, um, but basically, once you add the relationship, the field becomes available. So when you click on the list of add fields, the author name is there. And then you would just choose to add that field, and it would just show up in, in another column along here. And then you could do, you know, the no publish date, and it could show up in a column here. And, you know, if, we had, if I had a little bit more time, we could have gotten to that stuff. But it's really just, once you add the relationship, the two tables know how to talk to one another, and it can say, this node is li linked to this author, and just pull that extra info in. And you'll find that there are a lot of other modules and a lot of other stuff that's going to provide these relationships. You can actually have relationships between nodes where one node relates to another, and you could use that like for related content, or you could have, um, you could have a type of content that has uh, you know, other bits of information, like you could have location nodes and then a main, uh, a main info page, and that could have five uh, location nodes at attached to it, and you could add the relationship there and pull in that information, that type of stuff. But I mean, once you add the relationship, the info might, and the info becomes available. Yeah. Uh, so you showed us a lot of stuff in, in Views Three that's sort of different from, from uh, Six. Is there more functionality in Views Three? Is there stuff that you can do in, in Views Three that you just could not do in yeah, so, there, um, so, okay, so first of all, just a, a point of clarification, Views 3 is available for 6. Um, it, 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 it's in alpha, it's in a slightly different state than the one for 7, but it is available. So if you are in 6, you can start taking advantage of this. One of the key things that, it, that Views 3 does, the biggest thing, is actually allows you to use external data as a source for its, its view, which is just incredible. You can actually query another database, an external database, and, right. and use views on that, which is just incredible. Um, that, I, I'm pretty sure, is not available in 6 because it depends on some of the stuff that 7 does with the, the database abstraction. Um, mostly, though, it, it's just user interface stuff that's different. Um, they're, they're the, they're, the, there are a couple of things. But, but um, for the most part, you're, you're not, it's, I mean, I, we, I can get into some of the more, the more detailed stuff, but, but that's really the big one. You mentioned external data. Can you expect that data to come from an RSS, XML, or JSON object, maybe? Um, I believe so. I've not experimented yet with this feature. Um, if you bump into Earl while he's walking around or something, you might want to ask him. Um, about this info, although don't tell them I told you to ask. <laughs> um, I, I can, you know, if you want, I, you can email me, and then we can get we can get in touch. Um, my, my, I didn't put my email up there. It's uh, okay, great, awesome. Yeah, just tweet to me a question, whatever. I'm happy to help answer. Yeah. What was that uh, tool that you said that you can move around like the menu items as a UI and that drag and drop to like you said that you had a, it's a module. That to, to do what? I'm sorry. To like move to, to change the, the menu items right there in articles home. Across the top here, this stuff. Yeah. No, oh oh oh, the menu system. Okay, so that's actually within the menu system. That's this is the default menu system. If I go in here to my to my main menu and edit it. Oops. We see our list. Um, let's say home should be first, then articles, then pages, and hit save. Um, we can also do this by weight. If we called one a weight of zero and the other a weight of one and the other a weight of two, we can manually do it. But this one, you know, once you have them all created, it's easier to just jump back in here to the menu system, drag and drop, get it what you want, hit save, and you're good to go. But yeah, let's save this, actually. Oh, it has been saved. And now, yeah, we can see how it um, immediately affects our menus up here. Is this, is this presentation at all recorded, or do you have a version of it? Yeah, we, I just recorded it. Uh, hopefully it worked, but yes. Yeah, so. Sure, and, and you know you know me, Sasha, so you come up to me and ask me any, any questions you get, so. Yeah? Uh, is there a way to affect the output? Yes, okay, that's an excellent question. So first of all, some of the stuff we were doing, it was affecting the output, changing it from an unordered list to a table. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, totally. 
No, no, I understand. So, um, so one of the things that, that views, when you saw when I was creating those fields, you can actually add custom CSS tags to each of the rows and fields as they're coming out. But my sense is what you're asking about is how to programmatically go in there and tweak what's going on and stuff like that. It was simple enough, too. That's my easy yeah. So he, here it is. This is an amazing feature right here. Within this information, uh, some of the stuff that we can change here. The, the stuff I was talking about was the query, query settings before. You can go in there and change a different to it, grab from a different database. But what you're asking about is how to theme this. And there's a theme information section. And, and it's actually uh, very useful to, to have a quick look at this. So you can see here each of these um, different levels of output. There's the, the overall output. There's the um, individual style that's being output. And then each individual field you can override. And you can see here that it's using the default template files that Views provides for each of these things. But next to it, it's suggesting using levels of increasing specificity how to jump in. So well, let's say I want, I, want to, I want to only affect the second, the just our page view, not the article view. You could go in here and grab this one here and create a file called that. And then, um, oh, actually, let's go into the style output as one of, an example. So you would, you know, maybe like create, grab this one, create a file called that, hit style output, and this is actually the code of the template file right there. So you just copy it or grab all of this, copy it, paste it into that file that you just created, and it, you know, to your heart's content, you can tweak the output of this. Um, you can see here that Views also provides you quite a bit of information about what's coming out here. So if, if you have, um, if you know PHP, you can see here that, um, you know, you can grab this array of row items and, you know, do a for each on them and change what's coming out and you could completely customize what's coming out of views. Um, and all you would do would be, as I said, just to create that template file and put it in your theme folder. And, uh, and that gives you totally custom control of everything. And I believe that's it. If you guys have a couple questions, I, I don't have anything to do next, so just come up to me afterwards. But I want to let the next presenter to come in here. Thank you, guys.